Hi everyone, welcome to Anu's classes. So today we are going to start with the second block of quantitative techniques for managerial applications. Okay, and that is all related to the concept of probability. All right. So first and foremost, let us understand what probability means. So this concept is what we are going to say. Let me say upfront is not something that is going to be very new to us. Okay. Um, we have studied probability starting from our school days onwards. So this, uh, let us uh, think of it as a brush up, a quick brush up of whatever we have learnt already. All right. So what is probability? Well, probability is nothing but the extent to which something is likely to be happening, or it would be the case. Like for example, what is the probability that it would rain today? If it is on, in, if we are asking this question in summer season. The probability would be very less, right? It will be very highly unlikely. But if you are asking this on in monsoon season, then we can say that it is going to be very high, right? It is most likely. So that is probability. It is simply the extent to which something could happen. And the most, uh, how do we measure probability? We measure probability by the ratio of favorable cases to the whole number of cases possible like for example if monsoon season starts from june till let's say august or september um, and if the question is whether it will rain today or not then the favorable cases would be on the days which it rained and the whole number of possible cases are the days which it ra rained and did not rain that is the entire duration of our monsoon season if we divide them both that is the days it rained divided by days it did uh, the total number of days in the season if we divide it we will get the probability that on any given day it could rain okay so that is probability now while we are dealing with probability there are three main terms that we have to understand so that we can grasp the remaining concepts very easily right so the first one is what is an experiment or a trial an experiment is something that can be repeated and it has a set of possible results like for example you take the most easy and widely used example that is tossing of a coin right so one toss of a coin is an experiment or a trial like that we can toss the coin multiple times right so the experiment that is tossing of the coin can be repeated multiple times and there is a set of possibilities that could arise right either the coin can fall on its head or it can fall on its tail or in rare cases it could fall on its side right that is the middle it could stand upright these are the only possibilities correct if you take the case of a dice okay each time you throw a die it is an experiment or a trial and there are only a set of six possible outcomes it could either be from one to six correct so that is an experiment now what is sample space it is a set of all the possible outcomes or results of that particular experiment so in the case of a coin toss let us assume for now that it is not going to if it even if it falls on its side we'll treat it as a fail i mean we'll ignore that result means there is only two set of possible outcomes head or tail for a die throwing experiment one to six so that number that set of possible outcomes head tail or one two three four five six is the sample space for that particular experiment and the next is the event what is an event event is a set of possible outcome that is resulting from a particular experiment okay so when you throw a die the occurrence of one is or the occurrence of say three on the die is an event okay in general an event is any subset of a sample space and it could also mean an empty set that is nothing happened like for example if you consider sample space as heads or tails and if the coin falls on its middle then that means none of it happened right that is it is an empty event okay i hope it is clear to you guys what it is now the next thing that we are learning in this for uh, the very first that is the block number two first unit in that block that is unit number five are the different approaches to probability and our unit talks about three different approaches to probability the first is the classical approach that is the most common uh, when we think about probability let's say even it is the coin tossing or the roll the uh, rolling of the dice we are talking about the classical approach 
okay in that if an experiment has n simple outcomes then we are, what we are assigning is an probability of 1 by n to each outcome like for example uh, for a coin tossing experiment there are two outcomes in total so the probability that a head could occur or a tail could occur is 1 by 2 all right now consider this case okay what we are talking about over here is a fair coin okay that is it is equally distributed the weight is proper there is not there is like it is a ideal perfect coin but at the time of minting what happens is that it won't be exactly proper right every coin might have very slight differences maybe like minute differences and that could actually cause uh, uh, what you can say it it would lead our experiment to be not exactly fair okay like there are chances i don't know whether you might have come across it but some coins have a tendency to fall on its head more than on its tail or vice versa right or some dice could yield a particular number more than other numbers so that happens because of slight you know weight distributions or something like that at the time of manufacturing um, okay so you might have i don't know whether uh, you know the story it is uh, there is a character called shaguni in um, mahabharata okay and uh, it is said that shaguni had possessed magical dice which he used to use to defeat his opponents while playing right so i think perhaps what actually they meant by magical is that shaguni might have create crafted dice which uh, if rolled in a particular way might mostly fall or yield a uh, a particular set of numbers and if the person who's playing does not know that way then naturally it might not lead to that number right so i believe you all might have different opinions but i think sometimes that this is what is happening okay so such a probability where you cannot exactly assign a 1 by n probability to each of the outcomes of the sample space in occurring is called relative frequency approach okay and it is the most realistic kind of probability so over here we cannot actually assign 1 by n to each of the outcomes and the probability that we assign is weighted weighted on the basis of the past experiments okay the third one is called the subjective approach okay and it was developed by a probabilist named b definity and it is the most intuitive definition of probability according to this approach what he is saying is that the probability of an event is the degree of belief a person attaches to it or that event based on his or her available information okay and this whole reasoning holds only under the assumption of rationality which assumes that people act coherently okay so there are no formal calculations or anything it purely reflects the subject's opinions and past experience like for example uh, what can you say is that like, i i was brought up in a country called uh, it's a gulf country called bahrain okay and over there what used to happen is that uh, generally being a gulf country there is not high chances of rain if at all it rains it used to be when the seasons change like from summer to winter or winter to summer like that okay but uh, on its national day most often what happens is that it would rain so on any given day a uh, national day is on december 16th okay so any given day in on in december if you ask someone or if you ask me whether or not it is going to rain i would say yes because it is my belief that it is raining but if you ask somebody else they would say no no it is a gulf country in that too in the middle of winter it's not going to rain okay so that is the subjective approach so i might give a higher probability that it might rain on that day whereas somebody else based on his or her belief might not okay so that is subjective approach now so how do we calculate probability so as we saw earlier the easiest way of calculating probability is if there are n number of outcomes then the probability of any one particular outcome occurring is 1 by n that is the most simple probability approach
right that is the simplest way of calculating it okay the other way is like for example um, suppose in the case of rain okay if it's gonna rain or not in say the month of june i would take the past data of how many days it might have rained and based on the number of days or you can say the number of successful outcomes okay divided by total number of outcomes i might de decide my probability like that rather than just maybe in the month of june rather than giving on any particular day whether or not it will rain is not be, it will not be 1 by 30 right it might be more it will definitely be more than that because the number of days it rains in june is definitely more than the number of days it doesn't rain okay so that is another way of calculating probability um uh, and then what can uh, so but this is the thing uh, if you talk about probability you can be definite that it follows certain rules that is the probability of occurrence or p of uh, a okay the probability of an event a occurring will definitely be zero or greater than zero right and but it will be maximum one or less than one and if you add up all the probabilities of all the events that could occur, okay, if you add them all up, you will get 1, okay, 1 is the maximum probability. So, these are a few things, a few prob, uh, what you can say, these are the few um, basic, uh, uh, what is it, proper properties of probability. Now, another important concept that we will be discussing over here is how we can calculate probabilities in complex situations like for example um, say in a factory okay you have a machine which may be set up correctly or it could be set up incorrectly okay and given that as say for example and then even if a setup is correct it might produce a defective or a um, like a proper product Okay, and incorrectly also it might uh, churn out a correctly set up product or maybe defective product and uh, the but definitely correct set up defective product probability would be less same way incorrect set up correct product probability would be less. So suppose say you know that the product came out defective and say you know the probability of defective correct and say defective incorrect. Okay, and the probability that the machine is set up correctly or incorrectly. So, if you get some product, if you got a product that is defective, okay, what is the probability that the defect came from a correct setup or the defect came from an incorrect setup? Okay, how do we calculate probability like that? So, for that, what we have is we actually have a theorem called Bayes theorem. Okay, and what it does is it uh, helps us to calculate such complex probabilities but to apply Bayes theorem we need a few parameters up front the first is we need to know the what is the probability of occurring of say each events okay like say for example there are two events or two events a and b and they might produce say an, another event c okay like for example in our previous example which we were discussing the machine was set up correctly or incorrectly and the product came out defective okay so probability of a that is set up correctly probability of incorrect setup and then if we know the probability of let's say um, what what can you say uh, the the probability of um, correct but setup is uh, defective but setup is correct okay what is the probability that um, let's say we want to find out that it is incorrect but setup was defective how do we find that okay so such cases we can apply Bayes theorem okay and the formula for say Bayes theorem will be uh, say probability of a given c will be probability of c given a into probability of a divided by probability of c given a into probability of a plus probability of c given b into probability of b like that so how you can easily rem remember this is a given c okay this will be c given a okay if you have to find out probability of a that is correct given a defective product 
flip it over okay c given a and whatever is the denominator right so into p into a probability of a now whatever is in the numerator you write it as this in the denominator plus b next will be the opposite instead of a you put b okay probability of c given b into probability of b so that gives your base theorem formula okay so this base theorem formula can be applied in multiple situations like for example you know in a class there are say for example a few students passed in one subject a few students passed in another subject and a few students uh, and a few students passed in some other subject and only let's say um two percent of the students passed in all three subjects then what is the probability that um a student let's say one random student you pick up had maybe say failed in all three subjects all these kind of questions can be answered using our Bayes theorem okay so that is what the unit number five of our chapter deals with that is the very first introduction of our uh, probability okay i hope uh, you understood it it is a very easy concept actually nothing um, nothing quite complicated okay so um, if you have stuck with me till the end thank you so much and in the next class we will be talking about the different types of probabilities based on our sample space or based on the events that is how we can identify discrete probabilities and continuous probabilities and we'll go further into each of those okay so until the next class happy learning and all the best for the exams that are almost around the corner okay bye